the leadership, portraits and politics, 1512 to 1570. So Cosimo de Medici certainly understood how to establish political power. And he did that through political alliance. But he also understood it means establishing Florence as a cultural capital. And he used the arts, literature, architecture, and especially the visual arts to do that. So we have assembled here over 90 works from collections throughout the world. Europe, North America, Australia. It is a very ambitious presentation. But I can say without any hesitation, this is one of the finest, most beautiful. And for those who choose to reflect on the many issues that it raises, I believe it's also one of the most significant. It has an almost unimaginable concentration of masterpieces. 23 of Bronzino's finest portraits. Six by Cantorno, nine by Francesco Salviati, two bronze busts by Cellini that I would rank among the greatest portrait busts of the entire Renaissance. Now, the exhibition takes up a theme that I think is of broad interest today portraiture and the issue of identity, both of the individual and of the body politic. But it does so by concentrating on a particular moment and place. 16th century Florence, during the period when the centuries old republic was transformed into a Medici duchy imposed on the city by the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. Duke Cosimo Primo de Medici is omnipresent, and you will see him as a military figure, as statesman, and as a cultural uh, impresario. Despite what its title might suggest, the exhibition is not about the Medici and their climb to power, but about the social and the intellectual elite who inhabited this transformed state and the politics of culture that Cosimo brilliantly employed to reclaim uh, the great literary, intellectual, and artistic figures of Florence's Republican past in order to exalt a new absolutist state. At the very center of this transformation of questions of identity. A communal identity constructed around a common language and a shared cultural and intellectual heritage descended from the city's Republican past. Costumo founded a state institution, the Academia Fiorentino, to promote this heritage, which had as its center Dante, who many of you will recall was himself a political exile. It's a story worth reflecting upon today. In multiple ways, his achievement became a model throughout Europe. Now I want to emphasize two points. The exhibition presents extraordinary masterpieces that chart the ways in which some of the greatest artists of Western tradition constructed identity and portraits of simply astonishing quality and invention. Works that continue to resonate into the 19th century in the work of anger and Delacroix. And I think standing before some of Bronzino's picture paintings, you will instantly understand why they were so interested in this. And second, it's an exhibition that benefits from close looking, for these are portraits that contravene our common assumptions about portraiture, and I can't emphasize that enough. The pictures live at the opposite end of the spectrum from Alice Neal, informal, instantly engaging portraits of people she met and befriended. And I think it will be fascinating to walk from one to the other exhibition. The dominant concept is portraiture as a mask, both revealing and hiding aspects of identity, as well as occasionally making ironic comments on the poetics on which these hyper-sophisticated paintings are based, and they are incredibly sophisticated paintings. Now, Bronzino was, a, was an accomplished poet, and we display both his elevated and his burlesque poetry. And his burlesque poetry is incredibly transgressive. I would not be able to uh, actually uh, talk about it to you today. But if you're interested, Carlo Falciani will give you some idea of just how transgressive it is.
There were several points during the pandemic when I felt that the health project would have to be abandoned. But the persistent and absolutely committed efforts that are going involved kept it alive.